I'm Kenneth Temple and welcome to the kitchen. I hope you are excited about this class today because we're about to make a New Orleans staple, red beans and rice. I put a little twist on my red beans by adding smoked sausage and smoked turkey necks. I know, a little different, but let's get cooking. Before we begin, you need to make sure you have two pounds of soaked overnight red beans that are drained, plus you need to have three cups of white or brown rice, whatever you like. First things first, we're gonna clean our smoked turkey necks. So we're gonna take two pounds of smoked turkey necks and add them to our hot water. Don't be scared. Just use some tongs and dip it on in there. Don't be like me and just throw it all in there because then it's gonna splash on you, you're gonna scream, you're gonna holler. We don't want those problems. Also, we're gonna add two tablespoons of salt, kosher salt, and bring it up to a boil. And we're gonna let this cook for about 10 to 15 minutes so just so we can get all those impurities out. This looks great. As you can see, these little impurities floating around, you may not think it's a lot, but it really matters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drain this, cover it with 10 cups of water, add a bay leaf, then push it on the back burner so it can simmer. Woo. I know I'm not the only one that just got a smoked turkey neck facial. So now I'm gonna add my bay leaf to it, put it on the back burner and get it to a simmer while we prep our red beans. So now that our stock is simmering in the back, it's gonna roll for about 10 to 15 minutes. Let's start breaking down our vegetables so we can get these red beans on. First thing we're gonna start with is our bell pepper. Very easy way of cutting your bell pepper is just to go around the edge of the bell pepper so you don't have any seeds or pith in your bell peppers. So now we're just gonna chop these down. You don't want big chunks of bell pepper, and you don't want little chunks of bell pepper. Always remember when you're cooking that things that cook a long time, you can cut them just a little bit bigger. If they're gonna cook for a short period of time, you can cut them finer because they're gonna cook faster. Just one of those inside of chef tips. So we're just gonna break down these bell peppers, and we're gonna break down our celery and our onion, and then we're almost home with our red beans and rice. Anytime that you make any dish that's Cajun Creole, you will need to have the Holy Trinity, onion, celery, and bell pepper. If you ever come across a recipe and it does not have those three, it's not the real deal. Every cuisine has three base vegetables that they use, particularly the one that we're all familiar with here is the French style, which is onions, carrots, and celery. But in Louisiana, you know we gotta do things a little bit different. So we swap out the sweetness of a carrot for the sweetness of a bell pepper. Sometimes you can leave one of the trinities out, but for the most part, every time you make a Louisiana dish, you will always have onions, celery, and bell pepper. And the distant cousin, well, it's more like the first cousin, garlic too. Now, if you don't have onions, celery, and bell pepper, it's not the Holy Trinity, which means it's not Cajun Creole cuisine. Last but not least, everybody's favorite, an onion. In Louisiana, we always use Spanish yellow onions. You can use a white onion in its place, but for the most part, you always wanna use a Spanish yellow onion. Do not put Vidalia onions in anything. It's, it's too sweet, it's gonna ruin your dish. So the age old question is, how do I keep from crying when cutting onions? Well, between me and you, there's two tricks. The first one is chop very fast. The second one is to keep your onions in the refrigerator. Keeping the onions in the refrigerator actually slows down the gases that gets into our eyes and makes us cry like we just finished watching the beautiful love story. Now, Red Bean Mondays became a thing back in the old days when people used to have to do laundry on Mondays. And one way that they can work and eat at the same time was, well, we're getting a large pot of water on to wash these clothes. We might as well get a large pot 
of water on so we can cook some red beans. So that's how Red Bean Mondays became a thing because back in the day in Louisiana, wash day was on Mondays, not on Thursdays like you do yours anymore. Now let's get to cooking. We're gonna add two tablespoons of oil to our pot. And now we're gonna add our Trinity to our pot. Get it all in there. No Trinity left behind. Beautiful. And give it a little stir to make sure that all the vegetables are coated with the oil. Now while that cooks, let's break down our garlic. So you get recipes every day and it says X amount of cloves of garlic. But then you have this problem when you run into one garlic not being the same as the other garlic, right? So if you find yourself in that situation, just consider one of these jumbo cloves, about two to three garlic cloves. That's what I always do. But if you only get all of the normal size garlic cloves, you'll need eight of these. But for the sense of all of these jumbo cloves, I'm gonna use these guys, because I like a little garlic. Use as much as you love, or as little as you love too. So we're gonna smash the garlic and take out the day's frustration. The kids might be getting on your nerves, or maybe it's just your boss, or your significant other. So we're just gonna chop this down. You can hear this beautiful sound of our onions and celery cooking, just listen. Mm. And it's something special. It might just be because I'm from Louisiana that that smell of onion, celery, and bell pepper just does something amazing. It's just like the signal that good food is on its way. Come here. So the beautiful thing about red beans and rice is that no matter when you make the red beans, it lasts a lifetime in the freezer. Okay, really, don't leave it in there for five years. But red beans are really good in the freezer for about six months. I know sometimes we'll find things just in the freezer and we think that it has a little frostbite and then it's done. Take it out and put it in a pot. Red beans taste like it was made yesterday. So always mark your food with a permanent marker so you know the date. Don't play the guessing game of how long this has been in my freezer. And in the fridge, the red beans will last about seven days if you can keep from eating it all. Beautiful. Now that that's done, oh yeah, look at that. Starting to get nice and translucent. That's my new favorite word, translucent. Now, I like to use smoked turkey sausage just to make it healthier. When I was creating this recipe, everybody told me you had to use pickled pork, salted meat, ham hocks in order to get the right flavor on the red beans. Well, I was on a mission to figure out how to make these red beans just as delicious without losing the smoky flavor and also keeping it just a little bit healthier. That's how I ended up with smoked turkey next that substituted the ham hocks. And that's how I ended up with smoked turkey sausage to substitute andouille sausage or traditional pork sausage, just to make it healthier and flavorful at the same time. Now, this recipe took me seven years to master just to get it right. And this recipe y'all are making with me today is seven years of perfection. Seven years of good eating, seven years of what you doing, Kenneth? Now, the beautiful thing about using smoked turkey necks is it adds the same smoky flavor that makes red beans and rice traditional. Something about the smoky flavor that just adds this extra depth of love to red beans and rice. You can always use a smoked sausage of preference, and even if you wanna make this dish vegan, you can use a plant-based sausage in place of this and just omit the smoked turkey necks. And with a little bit of liquid smoke, then you'll have all of those wonderful flavors that's traditional. Now we're gonna add our garlic. two bay leaves, and one teaspoon of dried thyme. Give that a little stir. Mmm, 
soon as the garlic hits it, you can smell the fragrance of the garlic just jump out and say, thank you for adding me to the party. Smelling great, smelling great. Now we're gonna add our two pounds of drained, soaked overnight red beans. As you can see, your red beans should have exploded and opened up, that's what you're looking for. If you let these soak a little bit longer, the red beans will begin to sprout. So for some of y'all who's out there into sprouted beans, you're almost there. Now I'm gonna add two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. I know it's the word that we all struggle to say, but this adds a depth of flavor or what everybody starts to learn uh, recently is umami. It adds that nice meaty flavor that goes along with the meat, the beans, as it all cooks and makes love together. Now let's add our smoked sausage. And let's grab our turkey necks and turkey stock. Mm, mm. Mm -hmm. Get you a spoon with some holes in it, some tongs. Just get you something to scoop out the smoked turkey necks that's not your hands. Mm -hmm. It smells amazing. Now, if you want to skip this whole step of making your own turkey stock, just wash it like we just did, and then you can use chicken stock. Oh yeah, this ain't gonna fit. But we gonna make it fit. Cover your beans with your turkey stock. Give it a stir to make sure everything's nice and covered. So we're gonna bring this up to a boil, then we're gonna cover it and we're gonna let it cook for an hour and 30 minutes. But while it's cooking, make sure you give it a stir every 10 to 15 minutes just to make sure that the beans aren't sticking to the bottom and to check your water levels. So we made some extra stock. That's why we did 10 cups. Just in case as you're cooking your red beans, you notice that the liquid levels is reducing faster than you expect. That way you can cover it with the extra stock. But even if you don't use it anyway, after it cools off, just save this because this stock is better than any grocery store stock you can purchase. So we're gonna cover our beans and let it simmer for an hour and a half just until the beans are nice and creamy and that our smoked turkey necks are starting to fall apart. Hit the pause button, cut on some music, and I'll see you back soon. It's been an hour and a half and I can smell the aroma of the beans. Let's check them out. Mm, mm, mm. Look at how nice and creamy the beans are starting to get. As you can see, we still have some whole beans, but now this is the secret to making these beans traditional New Orleans. You wanna take the back of your spoon and just begin to smash the beans right on the back. And this is just allowing that meatiness of the beans to begin to get nice and creamy, and it's just gonna give you a beautiful gravy. Don't smash a lot, don't smash a little, but smash some beans. They look great. Now, cover them and let them simmer for another 30 minutes. Always make sure to check your liquid levels just to make sure your beans aren't sticking to the bottom of the pot and you have a little liquid in there. This is the seven year secret. Making our seasoning mix and then adding it at the very end. I spent years always layering my flavors and I had great beans. But doing this final technique made these beans amazing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take one tablespoon of kosher salt, one tablespoon of black pepper, two teaspoons of cayenne. Now, I love my heat, but you can always add as little or as much more as you would love. Two teaspoons of cumin, now, cumin isn't traditional in this recipe, but I find that the smokiness of the cumin adds a great layer of flavor that nobody would expect. And two teaspoons of granulated garlic. Garlic powder works too. So I'm gonna stir this together with my fork until it's nice and combined.
Beautiful. Set this aside. Now let's chop up our garnishes. So now we're gonna chop some Italian leaf parsley. It's very important. You don't want the stems of the parsley. You just want the leaves. The stem of the parsley can actually be bitter. So you don't want any bitter love in your love of red beans, do you? No. So what I like to do is I like to grab my parsley and squeeze it together and then get a nice chop on them. And it almost creates these little strings of ribbon of parsley that looks great on the final dish. See that? Looks really, really good, right? Really easy, you don't have to chop it all the way super fine and do all of that fancy chef stuff. Just chop the parsley. And also, we're gonna take some green onions and we're just gonna slice those down. Always take off the tips because they've been hanging out the longest and starting to wilt. And then get you a nice rough chop. Green and white parts. Do not, do not throw away the white parts. The first thing I actually ever learned to cut was pecans and green onions. Green onions is a great thing to learn how to start your knife skills because they don't roll all over and they're not clunky. So now that our green onions are nice and mixed, this is what you do. You'll bring the two together and make them one. Just play with your food a little bit right here, okay? And this is gonna be our garnish. Now you have parsley and green onions all in one. You don't have to do them one at a time. This looks great. My red beans are smelling amazing. Let's finish this dish off. Oh yeah, look at how pretty this is. I noticed during the 30 minutes cooking that my beans started to get thicker. That's why we have the extra turkey stock. So I added about a cup of the turkey stock just till it got to this beautiful consistency. Because one thing you wanna remember is after your beans finish chilling and you eat them the next day, you wanna add just a little bit of stock to it just to loosen them back up because they will thicken as they chill. This is what you're looking for, this beautiful bean consistency. Now, we'll add our seasoning blend. And this is the money right here, y'all. This right here changed the red bean game forever. Changed the red beans. And now as you stir it, you'll begin to awaken all of the salt, the peppers, the cumin, and you will see a slight change in the color profile of the beans and it actually got just a little hint darker just from adding that seasoning. Mm, mm, mm. I know y'all don't know no better, but this is love in the pot right here. This is love in the pot. Let's try it out. Do you see how nice and creamy these beans are? You have a little bit of gravy. You still have some whole beans. That's perfect. You don't want to mash all of the beans. Just a little bit goes a long way. Mmm, 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 mmm. That's it, that's it. No more talking, let's grab our rice and our plate and let's plate this wonderful dish up. Now always have a little fun with your rice. As you can see, I put some fresh thyme and some bay leaf in it just to add a little flavor profile to the rice. Now, it's very important that you know who you are in, in life. I'm a more beans than rice guy. You can be a 50-50 or you can be a more rice than beans guy. I'm a more beans than rice guy, cause I come to have red beans and rice. Mm. Little left hand Johnny. Oh yeah. Just let it happen. Mm, mm, mm. You can just smell the love in this kitchen and in this pot. 
And we can't forget some of that turkey neck. Mm, mm, mm. Look at that. Uh, oh, wait, a little bit more. Now we're just gonna clean up our sides. Garnish it with some more green onions and parsley. And since my grandma said, if it ain't spicy, it ain't right, I'm gonna add a little bit more hot sauce. You may be thinking we're finished, but we're not finished yet. You have to have some garlic French bread on the side to sop up that last little bit. I love to eat my red beans with a fork. You may eat yours with a spoon. I'm not gonna trust you really, but to eat your own. And that's it, y'all. That's how easy it is to make red beans and rice the New Orleans way. Oh yeah, right there. Mm. I instantly hear brass bands playing in the background. Rich, creamy, not too spicy. Beautiful texture on the red beans. Nice and soft. The smoked turkey sausage is perfect in this dish.